Yeah, bang, bang, Ray Hall. Um, years ago, Mason Prison, yeah. Um, when I was to spar in the in, in the uh, in the gym uh, with Billy Blundell, Ricky Curley, and I, I did say it before, but it's a bit different this time. Uh, I spar with this big black guy, yeah. The the guy, listen, this black guy, yeah, was so he was so fast and put his punches together so well, yeah. And I thought he was nothing, you know, like I looked at him, I thought, nah, he's, even his feet are wrong, and and I swear to God, um, he smashed me to pieces, yeah, he, he smashed all my mouth, my nose, uh, all my eyes, he smashed my eyes to pieces, he was just absolutely fantastic, jab, um, I mean, I couldn't get near him, every time I tried to get near him, um, he just jabbed my head off and gave me some weight, really good punches to the face, left up right hooks, and he really hurt me, yeah? He hurt me big time. So I'd done about three rounds of him, and then Ricky Curley, he was going mad, um, going mad because he said he wanted to get in there and, and, and spar with a guy. He wanted to hurt him, Ricky, because of what he was doing to me. We was pals, yeah? <laughs> but the guy, he had to be... He had, I can't think his name, you know, he's not the pride part, I don't know, I've, I've been trying to think his name for years. Uh, he had to be a professional fighter, he had to be, you know, he, he was just too good at what he did. And Ricky wanted, to, as I say, Ricky Curley wanted to spar with him, and uh, the black geezer just didn't want to know, you know what I mean, he just, no, I had enough, yeah, and walked away. And when I walked in the wing, in the world wing, uh, I'll swear, my face, my lip, was smashed to pieces. My eyes, my nose was bleeding. I was really cut under the eyes, and I was in a bad way. And this guy just smashed me to pieces. I told everybody um, in there when I went down for my meal, and people were saying, "Wow, what, 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 what hit you, mate? You know what I mean?" I said, "That, that guy there, <laughs> he hit me, mate." I said, "He's a brilliant, brilliant fighter." And everyone was like, "Couldn't believe it." Because I was supposed to be the business, you know what I mean? But he paid the life out of me, he really bashed me up bad. And if, he, if ever this guy is watching uh, my podcast or my video, get in touch with me, because yeah? he was just a brilliant, yeah? Anyway, and um, so I was still going down the gym, but I didn't do my, no sparring because I was really, really hurt, you know? But <clears throat> Billy Blundell, uh, He's come over to me and said, listen, when you come out, way, come and look me up, you know. He said, because I'll have work for you, if you want. If you want work, I'll have work for you, mate. He said, you know, you're, you're a proper guy, you know what I mean? And he said, I love the way that the guy bashed you up like that in the ring. and Well, not in the ring, really, but in the square. He said, like, and you know, he done nothing about it. He just took it as a, as, as a lesson. He said, I like that, yeah. He said, respect for you, mate. He said, but I'd love you to come and work with me, do a bit of work for me, yeah? So anyway, um, him and Ricky, uh, Billy Blunder and Ricky Curley always sparring together. So when I eventually got released, yeah, but years a lot later, when I got released, um, Bill gave me his, uh, his home address, and I went to his address, and uh, that, I mean, the place was big, big gap, a really big place. The house was sort of white, um, there was a great big, uh, like a dredged, a dredged, uh, like a big, massive lake, big dredge, you know, when they dredged it out. And used to do a lot of carp fish in there. I like to, I like to think who else is in there, you know what I mean? But he was, yeah, he used to do carp fishing. And yeah, I love Bill, mate. And when I went there, we went into the front room, there was a ring in there. You know, I was talking to Bill and it was like, just so nice, you know what I mean? And then asked me what I was doing. I went down with my mate Gary Francis, he asked me what I was doing, I said, well, I'm not doing nothing really. Um, you know, bits and pieces here, bits and pieces there, yeah. So he said, look, um, why don't you uh, come, you know, come down here and I'll give you some work. Bet it was too far for me to come, you know, so I didn't go like a fool, yeah. But I love Bill, mate. He was a nice, nice guy, hard man. Hard as nails, Bill, Bill Blundell. One of the hardest guys that I've, that I've ever met, yeah. He, uh, you know, when I got in the ring with Bill, he, you know, it was only little, but he put a lot into it, all the punches that he threw, yeah, it threw at me, he put a lot into it, yeah, but he was a really, really hard man, yeah, and, you know, it was sort of like, you know, when then he died, you know what I mean, he gutted me, gutted me really, 
you know, because we was pals. A bit, a bit, it got in Ricky Curley because Ricky Curley was like always with him, and Vicky Dart was always with him, walking around, telling you know all the tales he told, told of us and all that. And then they had that little uh, skirmish with Pat Adams. It was a skirmish. It wasn't a fight. It was just a, a few little punches thrown here and there. No, listen, it wasn't about who won the fight. It wasn't a, a winning thing. It was just a quick verbal match. Few little white handers, fight handers, fight, but it was nothing, you know, nothing too, uh, nothing too dangerous. Nothing, too, no, no one really got hurt. Pat might have got a clump here, Bill might have got a clump there, but that was it. There was no, you know, listen, them two had bad feelings about whatever, you know. Pat uh, was running Bill down for the way Bill was, and Bill was running him down the way, the way he was. So both the same, you know what I mean. But, you know, Pat, I mean, Pat, I got to know Pat really, really well, yeah. He was a bit awkward for me, yeah. But anyway, um, Bill, I was just gutted, as I said, I was gutted when things didn't work out as I should have worked them out with Bill, yeah. I should have gone work with him. I should have gone do things. But, uh, you know, we do a lot. When we're going to do this and do that, we never go on to doing it anyway. But, uh, you know, Pat Adams... Uh, nice guy, man. Nice guy, Pat. I mean, you know, he he, he trusted me uh, in lots of ways. Um, yeah, man, he just looked after me. He looked after me, Pat. He was a gentleman in prison. Uh, Pat was a gentleman to, with, with me. Many times he's come downstairs to my cell and, you know, give me socks, T-shirts, uh, bought me canteens. Yeah, mate. Bill, uh, oh, sorry, Pat was a gentleman, and there was a lot of people in 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 there, you know, uh, that 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 was like bad lots in. You know what I mean? That, but Pat really looks after me. Bobby Dixie, Bobby Dixie, nice guy, Bob. Um, Bobby Dixie, mate, proper gangster, Bob. When I come out of prison, I used to go down for Denzies and Pam and Joey's. A couple of times, I've seen Bob there. He's looked over to you, Ray showed out, showed out to me this, and we fell out, me and Bob. Me and Bob, me and Bobby Dixie fell out in uh, in Mason, uh, over Stevie Doran. Uh, Stevie Doran, mate, nice guy, Steve. Um, Steve stuck a nut on me, yeah, yeah, he stuck, <laughs> I can't believe it. Me and Steve had a word, few words, yeah, and uh, it was either me who stuck a nut on Steve or Steve stuck a nut on me, I can't really remember, but we fell out, me and Steve. Uh, never come to anything, uh, but but Bobby Dixie uh, was with Steve and Freddie Lloyd, so it made it a little bit awkward for me. Bob one day uh, was sitting in the cinema uh, with me, and or uh, well, not cinema, I watching television, but it's like the cinema really. And you know, I was sitting in the front, and Bobby Dixie said to me that he was going to stab me up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Bob. Hey? But so uh, yeah, we we then me and Bob had loggerheads. Then me and Freddie, me and Freddie uh, Lloyd, Freddie Lloyd had loggerheads. Stevie Dore and it was murders. There was murders in there. Um, Pat was with me. That Pat was like leave off, you know, like Ray and this and the other. He's sweet man. And then you had the O's that a bit of a wind up. What he meant to go have a well, Dennis and Dookie. Yeah, there's a lot of people. There was so many people. Peter Coulson, Peter Coulson, I love Peter Coulson, mate, uh, Bank of America. You know, I felt sorry for Peter because uh, all the money Peter had, yeah, Peter Coulson. Peter Coulson was a gentleman, yeah, because he was not, money didn't, ma money didn't mean nothing to him, yeah. And anybody who is anybody and anybody that was really skint, Peter Coulson would go and buy canteens. Yeah, and he never got he never got the same back. You know, he'd buy people canteens, he'd look after them, buy them trainers, buy them t shirts and all that. Peter Colson, he was a gentleman, mate. He was a diamond. I love Peter. Uh, there was a, so many in there, mate. Mason, good people, Vicky Dart, uh Billy Haywood. Billy Haywood, mate. Uh, to meet Bill in there and I see Bill outside and and all that. It's weird, isn't it? You know what I mean? You see these people, you know, when he, like, in prison, how you going, Bill? And 
I was remembering Daniel Panarin. It's just like weird, isn't it? It's crazy, really. Nice guy, though, Bill. I like Bill. I liked him a lot, so Billy Hayward. Proper diamond geezer. Dangerous geezer. He didn't muck about, mate. He was, he was, he was dangerous. People say to me, yeah, but really, you talk about he's dangerous. Because everybody I talk about is dangerous. You know what I mean? They are. And the people, nine times out of ten, the people that we, we that we that we know and we talk to, they're the people that are dangerous, you know what I mean? Because the others, we don't want to get involved with as such, you know what I mean? We don't, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't. And it was, I just said, Mason Prison was a good prison, mate. I like Mason. Um, I, think, I think I got released from Mason. I'm not quite sure now. It's such a long time ago. I've been in prison so many times in my life. I forget when I was in prison, what days I was in prison. Was I in Mason before I knew Pat? Was I in Mason after I knew Pat? But it's mad, isn't it, you know? But as I say, me and Pat uh, Adams, no, I like Pat, man. I liked him, not because, because he's Pat Adams and he's dangerous and all that, you know. I didn't find Pat dangerous, you know what I mean? I mean, Pat to me, I could eat Pat alive, you know what I mean? But yes, he was dangerous, um, i.e. he would fucking shoot you. He would kill you without showing up, Pat Adams. He's that way dangerous, yeah? So people like that, you know. I met Tommy, Tommy Adams, a couple of times in uh, in Chigwell, over that way, Epping, with a mate, a geezer uh, uh, called, I don't know, well, called, well, I ain't gonna say his name really because there's a big thing about the money that he got done for a big money laundry thing. But anyway, yeah, yeah. So I met all these, I met, I met everybody that is anybody that I've met, yeah, in my life. And, you know, I've had some good times, mate. I've had some good times. The best times I've ever had in my life, really, was with uh, Mickey Gooch. I love Mick, mate. I was a fool. I ruined it between me and him. I was a fool. Uh, but Mickey Gooch, mate, he treated me like a brother, you know what I mean? He, uh, you know, he, he just said, look, you're interested in doing this? And I was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Done it for him. And then... We had murders about it because he didn't think that I'd done it and I did it. There was two twins, I'd done one of them. He said he had one. He said that he didn't do it, but anyway, I did it. And then Mickey looked after me, bought me cars, uh, money, gave me plenty of money. Just loved me, man. Took me away to Helsinki, Finland. Not Helsinki, to Austria, skiing. Do you know what? I'm the worst skier in the world. Hated that skiing game, mate. They big boots. I was 19, 20 stone. I couldn't get off the floor. If I fell over, I couldn't get off the floor. It was virtually impossible for me to get off the floor. Yeah, but I obviously did, but you know, it's hard work, you know, you're 19, 20 stone trying to get off the floor. So sort of snowing, and the kids are coming down the mountain like lunatics, spitting at you in their little Batman uniforms. Yeah, man, it's crazy. And Mickey loved me, man. Mickey, I've had some terrible fights. Uh, over Mickey, people thinking they can take liberties, you know, that's why I was with Mick, um, looked after his wishes, looked after Mickey and all that, you know, and if people took li liberties with Mick, and then that's the face me, mate, and that was what I did, you know, anyway, bang bang rail, just a little video, um, I'm just going to go and have a shower, I haven't been long without the gymnasium really, uh, have a shower, and I'll tell you what I've done today, yeah, I went up the gym and I had a really, really good workout. Hour and 20 minutes, hour and 30 minutes, really good. And I thought to myself, what I'll do, I'm gonna go up there with uh, the thing I've got on now, the, the, the podcast holder, a, a, the, my phone holder with the light and all that going. Gonna go down there, extension lead. I'm gonna go in the gym and I'm gonna go on a speedball to trying to learn now i used to do very i used to be really good at it but it's getting back into my shoulders anyway so i got on the ball speed ball i was on it for what i don't know five minutes four minutes uh, then i got on to the uh, benching doing some bench work some half benches full benches heavy bunches flies and all that then i got some preacher curls 
and then I've done some other curls, triceps. I've done about an hour and 20 minutes workout, I think, something like that. And I had it all on video. I thought that it was all on video, yeah? So when I finished it, um, I've done a bit of stretching, a bit of this, a bit of that, and and I thought, I'll have a look at it, but people are looking like this, and I'll do it while I'm in the gym, you know? And when I've done it, I looked at it, I forgot to turn it on. <laughs> I turned it on, but I didn't turn the video on. Oh man, I was going crazy, because it was so good. Really, it was such a good video, you know what I mean? Of me training, and the way I train, and the way I was talking to people. But tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, I'm gonna go up again. Wednesday, usually I have a day off, but I'm gonna go up again tomorrow. And I'm gonna do another workout, do my shrugs, uh, do my lap pulls, do uh, dumbbell lap pulls, do some curls, do some triceps, do a go on the ball, speed ball, start off with a speed ball, finish with a speed ball, always. You know, and show you it, you know, as a workout, talk to you, mate, and then just talk to you as I'm finishing it, you know what I mean? We're doing it, yeah? Yeah, I can't wait, I'm looking forward to it. I could have done, because, Someone said to me, go back and do another workout. Go back and do another workout, because I've done, I've already done two workouts, because the fir first workout I've done, workout I've done, nine and a half minutes, right? My phone was, my phone was, had too much uh, in it, so it blocked, it went dead. So the nine and a half minutes I've already done, I went, what's the point of showing nine and a half minutes? It's nothing, you know what I mean? It's stupid. You know, so then I went back onto it and done a big one and it went off. So tomorrow I'm going to make sure that it's on. My mate's going out. He went, oh, God, I, I said, mate, what do you mean can't have another workout? I've done half a workout. Now I've done a full workout and it ain't come up on my video. I said, listen, you might get on the running machine, do a little bit of running, a little bit of stretching, a bit of skipping, and that's a workout. No, nah, mate, come work out with me, you, you know. And I said on the video, yeah, if you're hard enough, if you think you're hard enough, come and have a workout with me, yeah. There ain't many people my age that are going to come and have a workout with me, believe, believe. They're fucking faint. Too hard, mate. Too hard. I'm too powerful for you, mate. Anyway, bye, mate. Bang, 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 bye, bye.